All right. Well, uh, welcome to Breakfast Daily. And uh, this segment is the news review segment. And uh, we're going to get into the conversations. And you know, of course, uh, everything's about the budget this, um, you know, today, because yesterday the finance minister was in parliament to read the mid-year budget. Now, um, I have been joined in studio this morning by Larry Dugby, who is the editor of the Herald newspaper, and Elvis Dako, the editor of the Finder newspapers. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you all doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Yeah? Mm. You can't complain. Yeah, you, you can't complain. Alive, you, you will complain. No, you can't, can't complain. complain. <laughs> Which one yeah. is it? You can't yeah. complain or Once you won't complain. Once we are alive, we yeah. hope. Yeah. We we'll live on hope. Okay. Eh? Fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Happy 50th hope. birthday. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. You have reached the 50th level. Yeah. The, the, the fifth floor. floor. Mm. Yeah. It's not easy. By the grace of God. Eh? No wonder you have a grey hair. It's a sad one. I hear that transition from <laughs> 40 to 50 yeah. is sweet. Yeah. Oh, I mean... 50 came too early I, or too soon? I still feel like 25. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Who, who do we like. ask? There are people to ask, but I will give you, I will give you the, the filler after the show. I can't put it out on air here. <clears throat> Good morning to you. <laughs> well, speaking of the budget review, um, let's take a look at... Uh, snippets of what happened yesterday. We'll come back and then I'll engage you guys. All right. All right? Okay, let's take a look. In accordance with Section 28 of the Public Financial Management Act, the Finance Minister, Ken Ophoyata, provided an update on the economic and fiscal performance for the first half of the year in the mid-year budget review to the House. He provided an update on the domestic macroeconomic development for the year 2023 where he announced a reduction in inflation and also a relative stability of the exchange rate. Overall, real GDP growth declined 5.1% in 2021 to 3.1% in 2022. This was lower than the 3.5% projected for the year. Non-oil GDP growth declined over the period, recording a growth of 3.8% compared to 6.6% recorded in 2021. Headline inflation accelerated consecutively from 13.9% in January to 29.8% in June and to a peak of 54% in December 2022, following the sharp currency depreciation and surge in commodity prices. Interest rates broadly trended upwards across the spectrum of the yield curve, consistent with the tightening policy stance. The 91-day and 182-day Treasury bill rates increased to 35.48% and 36.23% respectively in December 2022, from 12.49% and 13.19% respectively in the same period, 2021. Cumulatively, the Ghana CD depreciated by 30.0%, 21.2%, and 25.3% against the U.S. dollar the pound sterling, and the euro. This, compared with an appreciation of 3.5% against the euro and a depreciation of 4.1% and 3.1% against the US dollar and the pound respectively in 20. The government is indebted to the independent power producers to the tune of over $2 billion, with the IPP threatening to shut down their plants if government failed to announce the debt owed them. In the presentation of the media budget review to Parliament, the Finance Minister Ken Ofoyata says an engagement is ongoing with the IPPs on financial arrangements to ensure debt and financial sustainability. All right, so just a little bit of what happened yesterday. And um, let me start with you, um, Larry. Um, what were some of the highlights for you in this? Was there any positive? At all? Any positives out of this at all? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult to pinpoint mm. you know, a particular um, 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 area where um, to put your finger on and mm. say that this thing, I mean, it looks quite promising. Because all we had mm was, I mean, revising uh, growth rates from 2.8 to 1.5. Yeah. Okay. That is a huge slash. Mm. You get it. 
everybody knows also that you are not paying your interest on the, a lot of the monies you owe. Yeah. And so it's quite a difficult thing for one to say that, listen, we have turned the corner and we are going the full stretch. You recall when we were in secondary school and other places, mm. I mean, <laughs> during uh, athletics, <laughs> you know, particularly the relay. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as the guy, your best runner takes the Here's corner. The corner. Yeah, Charlie, you, you can know that. Yeah, I mean, this guy, yes, we are set. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are going to win the race. Yeah. But it doesn't look like that. Mm. Slashing things, you know, reviewing this, yeah. putting this down and all that. I mean, which economy, okay, would say that, I mean, Ghana is a developing country. Mm. And many other countries are growing by some by 15%, others by 10%, 8 yeah. and all that and so on. And we even projected 2.8. Mm. And at of that 2.8, you have gone to parliament to slash the thing by, what, 1.3? And you boldly come and sit on TV or tell Ghanaians that, listen, everything is working well. And that, you know, the growth rate is going to be rather 1.5. Mm. The, the, the mid-year budget review, um, the 2023 edition, devoid of taxes and supplementary budget, any comment before you? But it's the man, they are not spending, are mm. they? Mm. Are they not spending? But they are building. Building what? Uh, is there, there, is there the agenda 111? Yeah, prayers are ongoing. Where? Oh, well, I mean, I think a couple of months ago, um, the Minister of Information, um, Ministry of Information came out with some projects that were ongoing, and there was a. There was a Does whole agenda 111 include uh, the La? There was a whole show The reel. La General Hospital. Yeah, it's, supposed it's, supposed it's part of it. And so, is it, has it started? No. That one hasn't started, but it's about maybe 30, 40. Have we paid all the debts, owed all the contractors? The oh, IPPs are oh, on. oh, no. That's for that one. There's more debts. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't say that you've taken a corner mm. and going, you know, the way. No, but the corner, maybe it's the first corner. It's not the last. You are thinking about last corner. <laughs> the, the, first, the, the, first, the first corner. <laughs> you know, when I was coming, I was listening to a lot of, you know, radio stations. And uh, uh, anywhere you tune into, the, <laughs> disappointment mm. the experts are beginning to yeah, talk yeah okay that i mean this is not the time to say that you've taken the corner mm. but from what they have seen mm. it is not a good sign it is too early for you mm. to start talking the way you are talking the fact that prices of goods and services are mm. not going up like mm. the way they mm. used to i mean some yeah sometime yeah. last year yeah it's not doesn't give you that kind of yeah. uh, uh, um, 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 hope hope yeah. for you to to, to go out there and be trapping success or something. I mean, you know, I, the audio was just too much. It was more sound, 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 sound bites than. Hmm. You know, Elvis, I have this picture in my mind. I don't know if you've ever been up Kweu or, or even, let's say, the Latte um, Hills, where a big truck is trying to negotiate. Yeah, then they are, you, are, you are in the corner, <laughs> but sorry, you are actually there. You can see that they go, you are in the corner, but it, it, it sort of, that's a picture in my mind when you look at Ghana. Even if you are turning the corner, it's, like we are, it's almost like we are stuck in the corner. I don't know what you felt about it. Oh, sure. You see, an economy that is in an IMF bailout and an economy that has lost access to the international credit market, that we used to borrow to refinance our debt. Mm. We borrow when it's time to pay. Then we go and borrow to come and pay. And now we don't have the ability to do that anymore. That's why we run the economy anyway. So clearly you realize that the economy is in a tight corner. There's no two ways about that. We all have to admit that the economy is really in a tight corner. We assume that 2022, the worst is over mm. and that things will get better. But with the finance minister going to parliament now to review almost all the fiscal targets downwards, yeah. yes. it's an indication that, yes, that expectation and projection has not been met yeah. or has been thrown out of the, yeah. the, the window. And mm -hmm. it's, it's clear that even the expectation that the economic recovery should take three to four years, probably we will not have to look at that because clearly if you are reviewing a 2.8% growth rate. Mm -hmm. Now you are bringing that 1.5. Yeah. 
clearly there is something wrong. You talk about the fact that you can't get access to the capital market to borrow, yet your revenue expectations to are not be met. Mm, yeah. Meanwhile, your debt is huge. If I read the budget, the finance minister says that despite the reprofiling, the GDP and everything, the estimated interest we are supposed to pay on our loan this year is 44 point something billion. Just interest on the loans, it's about 44 point something billion wow. that we are supposed to pay. In fact, outstanding debts that government should pay immediately mm. in the budget now is about 30 billion, which government doesn't have the money to pay. If you look at the boiling up of the IPP's debts, and you look at other sectors, contractors that we have been owed, and so you clearly realize that we are broke. That's mm. the issue. The mm. country is broke. Mm. We need to spend, but we don't have the money to spend. That is the bottom line. Mm. And now, because we are in the IMF bailout, we can't really go and borrow. So we are dependent on bilateral support. Yeah. But you see, the bilateral support you want to depend on, we have all been hit by the global economic crisis. Mm. So the countries you expect to come to your rescue quickly, they are battling their own problems in their own backyard. So they can't come to your rescue the way you expect it. Mm. So you can really say that, yeah, the grants and all those things that we're expecting to, really we are having challenges. So clearly, we are living in a situation where we should all admit that, look, it's going to take us some time for things to adjust the levels that we want to. For now, with the mid-year review, you, can, you can't ask for more because the IMF is telling you you can't spend. Mm. If you have to spend, generate the money. You have to meet the, the targets of the IMF for you to get the next 600 million in uh, November. Yeah. So you have to go by the uh, 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 conditions that you have agreed with them. So all the things in the budget, if you look at largely, it's, it's trying to meet the conditions the IMF says we should meet mm. so that we can get the next 600 million mm. in, the, uh, in, in, in November. So clearly, uh, this is an economy that is really in distress. Mm. The finance minister say we are telling the economy because... But how can sound so hopeful, though? I mean, because... No, because but, last year, if you look at the situation last year, yeah. it was really tough. So at least this year... It's not as difficult as last year. Okay. So you can say that, okay, we have moved out of the worst situation. Okay. Because if you look at between 2021, 2022, if you look at the way even prices have been increasing, mm -hmm. all those things, you realize that when we enter this year, yeah. all those things seems to be a little bit stable. Yeah. So at least yeah. it gives some hope that mm -hmm. uh, we are not going to crash as we feared. Mm -hmm. At least there's some level of stability in some of the bad the ability to settle this thing very stable yeah. and decide, be able to get to the level where you can say, now we are growing is an issue, mm. which is being estimated that any country that wants to develop, you need to grow between 8 to 10% annually for at least 10 years to be able to make any meaningful uh, progress. So if we are talking about 1.5, and we are looking at, if you look at the projection for next year, it's about 2.8. And then you 2020, uh, five is about 4.9, mm. and then 2026 is about five point something. So, okay. if you look at the projections, even up to 2026, mm. clearly we are still even below five percent growth rate mm. in, in up to 2026. That is three years, and we are saying that in three years, we still can't grow like seven, eight percent. Mm. In, wow. in 2026, we are not hitting the 78% even in 2026. Yeah. And that is even dependent on the fact that if we are able to achieve all the things we actually plan, that's where we are looking at this growth rate. So clearly, as a country, we all have to raise ourselves up and know that, yes, things might be a little stable. They are not as it was last year. Yeah. But clearly, you should see that this is the situation. And see, now the effects of the DDEP. Yeah. Is clearly being felt, mm. and you can see it in everything that is coming up. Bank of Ghana declared 60 billion losses. 48 billion is as a result of the DDEP. 48 billion mm. is a result of the DDEP. It's just about 5.7 billion that is lost to city depreciation. Yeah. And then about 6 billion are loans and grants they've given to state institutions, which have also failed to pay. So you can look at the 60 billion, 48 billion. It's all government debts, bonds, and things that yeah. has to be uh, 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 given to the new bond and therefore slashed 
the 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 the, the amounts that Bank of Ghana is suspecting that would have accrued on those yeah. things, leading to this kind of loss. So you clearly can see that really things are really bad. The the a little bit positive you see is the first half of the banking sector performance. At least we've realized that. Though the bank declared about 14.8 billion losses for 2022, mm. for the first half of this year, they have actually been able to make about 4.3 billion in the first half of the year. And if you look at the last year's losses of the banks, in the first half of the year, they were making 2.8 billion profit. But because of DDEP, mm. which happened the last quarter, they actually ended up making 14.8 billion losses. That is the impact that the DDEP has had on the banks alone. Mm. The banks alone have lost 14.8 billion as a result of DDEP. That is the commercial banks. Mm. So you can look at Bank of Ghana also losing 48 billion, added to that. And the individuals that have lost money. As well. So you can really see that the DEP really has affected, it's, it's across board for yeah. everybody that has something to do with government debt and bonds. Yeah. The DEP has really affected. And now, this year, people are now feeling the impact. Now, it's not even enough. That's why now we are looking at a new round of uh, debt uh, exchange with the pension funds. Yeah. So clearly it means that in an effort to reduce our debt, it's going to have more impact on so, a lot of so situations. So I want us to segue into that conversation just now about the, 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 the pension funds. Um, there's a story here on citynewsroom.com. Government extends invitation for uh, 31 billion Ghana City pension funds. This is to do the DDEP. And the story says, government has commenced an alternative offer for pension funds exchange, inviting holders of domestic notes and bonds of the central government, uh, ESLA, PLC, Dachi Trust, PLC, and Dachi Trust, PLC. Um, the government is seeking to exchange approximately 31 billion principal amount of the eligible bonds for a package of new bonds. This invitation, I quote, is intended to enable the pension funds to preserve their patrimonial value um, while exchange their eligible bonds for bonds that offer more potential liquidity. A uh, Monday, 30, July 31st, uh, 2023 statement from the Ministry of Finance announced. It's a sequel to the recently launched dollar-denominated bonds and cocoa bills exchange. It just seems like we've given a lot of money to government government seems to have not been able to use it well and it's brought us into a situation where we are in crisis and they're trying to hold more of our money yeah because we're running i i said we are running when i say we are running a foreign economy people say, where do i say that i say everything that we use in the country is imported mm. the the monies we've given to government in all these loans should have been in productivity yeah. somewhere else yeah that is how the economy will really grow when we borrow money to government, what it meant is that we are saying that when government goes to collect the taxes, yeah. goes for loans, yeah. get grants, get royalties from natural resources, it should use it to come and pay us the high interest rate it's offering. Mm. So we are consuming the money that should be used for roads, water, and the rest by giving our money to government. And we think because the interest rate is high, it's okay. Mm. Then we're consuming the money. It gets to a point, government keeps increasing and going to the rural market to borrow more to come and pay us, and we're all happy. Now the government says, we have both chopped the money, it's finished. <laughs> you have chopped the high interest rate uh, now. We can't even borrow to pay. Are we eating the books we, now? We, we are at a point <laughs> that <laughs> if we don't restructure the debt, mm. our ability to pay is not there. We can't pay. It's simple. That is the situation we've got into because yeah. we've lost the access to the capital market where we used to go and borrow to come and refinance the borrowing. Mm. So now that we cannot go and borrow to come and refinance the borrowing, the government says the local revenue we are getting, it pays for only three things. And then the entire mobilization of revenue in the country is finished. And so if you, the, all the, uh, the uh, mobilization is finished in, for three items, mm. all the other items the government has to go, where is it coming from? You have to borrow. So you see, borrowing to government should be even at the lowest rate. In fact, borrowing to commercial banks should be at a higher rate than to government. But what we had in the system was that you, when you give money to government, you make more money. Mm. So it, it got to a point where banks have as much as 80% of all their investment in, in government instruments because for them, it's government. Government doesn't mm. fail. Government will pay. So you see, we, instead of all, all of us focusing on, no, giving money to government really doesn't bring growth, mm. doesn't add to productivity. 
that we should look for options where we can rather put the money in ventures that generate money. We are all not looking at that. We are all looking at let's give the money to government yeah. and it will get interest. So, well, that, I mean, I so, think... so that's what we have done. That is why we are where we are today. And until we change this situation, if we cannot really... See, that's why we shout about growth. But growth doesn't come by borrowing to government. Growth is when you add value you produce. Yeah. Private sector. Yeah. But when we give all the money to government, the banks we give the money to, say if they give the money to private people, they fear the money may not come back. Yeah. So they also carry out all the money and yeah, go and give it to government, government and say, yeah. every man I'll take interest. It's, so it's you see, safe. it's about a recalibration mm. of how we've been run the economy mm. in this fourth republic. Mm. Mm. We've run an economy in fourth republic that is based on let's borrow money to government and collect interest. Mm. That is why in 30 years, the economy is still struggling to survive. Yeah. But, but we should borrow, we should money. look for money. Yeah. I, I listened to, uh, let's say I listened to a video about uh, uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Mm. He said, they were told that they have to go and be borrowing from the international banks. Mm. And then it, he told his country that they will never do that because it will not grow their country. Mm. When they were resisting it, people thought that he was mad because they thought, ah, they said that's the best way to grow your country. Mm. Mm. But when they resisted it and think that they have to grow, have organic growth and build, that is how they're able to build Singapore. Yeah. So this idea of let's borrow money to government, let's borrow money to government, but it I won't create any job. Yeah. Because government is not creating the jobs. Yeah. It's, it's so we must look at how all of us, that's why all this DDP, one thing I'm looking at of this DDP that we'll get to a point where borrowing money to government will yeah. no longer be lucrative. Yeah. Where we'll have people put their money into ventures that yeah. Create jobs for the people. Yeah. That's the only way you can go to the so, economy. So, um, Larry, it seems that, you know, in our own personal lives, we seem to have the wisdom mm. to understand that a certain kind of borrowing is only going to take you downhill. Yeah. But it's like as a country, we don't seem to have that wisdom. It doesn't seem to be there. You know, it's like we, the decisions we take as, a, as individuals in our, in our personal lives. We won't take. We don't take those same decisions as a as a nation. So uh, when was this? Was it uh, f uh, Saturday? Mm. I was reading uh, a story from uh, from I think on CTF mm. uh, and quoted President Mahama at saying that uh, President Akufuado is suffering from I mean memory loss. Mm. Let me put it mm. that way, mm. and. He talked about the promises he made, keeping the public purse, you yeah. know, being very hard on yeah. his appointees yeah. and that, whether you're looking for, um, if it's money you want to make, it is not in his government that you have yeah, to do that. Yeah. I mean, what he failed to add or what the story failed to talk about was the management of the economy, mm. okay, where we were promised that, listen, there wouldn't be any borrowing. Mm. We wouldn't do this. We yeah. won't do that. We won't do that. Moving from taxation to production. Exactly. We won't yeah. go to IMF. Yeah. We won't do this. I mean, and so a lot of Ghanaians believed in that. Mm. Mm. I think we had come to a position where we felt that the excessive borrowing is not helping anybody. Yeah. Okay, so you make money and all you need to do is to look for the person you owe mm. and then go and service your debt and you are back to ground, one, zero. And so people thought that, oh, this brand of leaders will take us to the promised land, mm. okay? I mean, Ken Ufoyata had been projected as the guy with the, with the magic wand <laughs> to take us to wherever he has been... Uh, Yale, an, a Yale economist, mm. so so and so, mm. you know, had been there, run data bank. He's been that, 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 that. Bro, I mean, we are where we are. And where we today, we are having to revise our, mm. you know, uh, our growth rate. Inflation is where it is. Prices are not going up because we are not paying the interest rate. Mm, 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 mm. You, 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 you get what you so, get. so the very moment we, we, we started paying, yeah. everything will go through the roof again. Or we'll go down further into mm, an abyss. Mm, mm. And unfortunately, I asked uh, 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 Elvis a while ago, it appears under President Mama, it says we've eaten the meat to the bone. <laughs> but as of now, we can't, there's no bone even. Okay. There's no bone left to chew. Yeah, to chew or even throw to the dogs. There's nothing. There's practically nothing. And so we're just going down. It, right? it, it says we are making progress. 
we won't ask for more money. This is what he says here. Let me no, read. No, if you don't ask for more no, money. No, no, let me read that story for you. Let me read it. <laughs> <laughs> the finance minister, Ken Oferreta, says, the Nanado Danko Ekufuado government will not ask parliament for any additional money. According to him, this was necessitated by the progress made in the non-oil tax revenue collection within the year. The finance minister made these remarks when he presented the mid-year budget review of, in parliament on July 31st. Now, for the, it is, and I'm going to quote, for the first six months of the year, we continue making progress to exceed our non-oil revenue targets for the year. We have seen improvements in non-oil tax revenue collection despite some noticeable falls in VAT. However, oil revenues have fallen short of the expectations due to changes in global prices. We will therefore undertake a downward review of the oil-related revenue as well as the corresponding, corresponding expenditures to align with the underperforming of um, some of our revenue handles. Okay, but he says in a nutshell, we don't need to go for more loans, for more borrowing. We are not coming to Parliament to ask permission to go and borrow anymore because that, I mean, too much English language. It's just English semantics. Language. It's just English language. The bulls, city. <laughs> word, if there's a word like that, I mean, the man just threw a lot of English language around. How many Bible quotations did he do this time around? I, I took notice of uh, Genesis somewhere. And, uh, I, took notice. I, I think I, I got somebody counting for me. Uh, I mean, bro, Listen, things are very tough. Oh. Yeah. Maybe this morning we should have done this show somewhere in Makola. Mm. Okay. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> so, because that is where the economy is. Mm. Madina Market, Malamata, mm. and many others. That is where the economy is. And these guys will be able to tell you whether people are buying or not. How much they are having to pay to transport their wares to wherever it is that they sell. And whether or not people come there to mm, buy. Mm. How all these uh, you know, local government agencies are on their case, demanding one revenue or the other. We are making progress. Yet you are done, you know, I mean, there's a downward review. Mm. For instance, if your daughter who you, you know, you talk about yes, every, you, every, yes. <laughs> every now and then. Yes. tells you that, oh, Daddy, do you know something? Uh, this term, I am going to be the first in the class, mm. okay? And then midway through the term, or just when exam was about starting, she calls you again and tells you that, Daddy, I think the way things are going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be 15 for. Uh, what would you do? <laughs> but I'm making progress. Uh, I'll be 15, but I'm making progress. <laughs> yes. So what happened to the promise of being about what? Thank you. That is what we are dealing with. That is exactly what we are dealing with. Hmm. He, she says she's, go, she's going to be the first in the class. And you're yeah. so excited. Everybody, yeah. you even call your mom. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you your know. Your granddaughter says she's yes. going to be the first. Yes, so please, you know, help mm. us in prayer. Yeah. And then maybe we just says <laughs> our revision week. She calls you and says that, Daddy, I think that I have made significant progress. However, after, is it, I've taken I've the taken corner. corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the 15th in class. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I mean, what would you what would you make of a of, of a girl like that? Hmm. Ah, it's a problem. Really? No, it's a problem. Meanwhile, you've paid your fees. Everything. It's a problem. It's a problem. You make sure that she goes to class every day. Hmm. Books, all that. And she tells you that, Daddy, I can't be the first anymore. I'll be the fifteenth. <laughs> but I'm making progress. The point is, can't be 15. You didn't buy books. You didn't buy the books and the things for her. This is the economy of faith. See, I think the minister said we make progress. And I think the story is clear. It's about some increase in domestic revenue. Okay. That's the issue. Mm. The truth is that the minister actually needs more money. Should I be asking for maybe $10 billion from parliament? Why? Because we have so much development needs. Mm. We have so much projects that have been suspended but, but he, because contractors have not been paid. And contractors have not been paid. Why? 
because there's no money. Yeah. So if you really wanted to pay them so that you can resume Obechebi, Lamte, and the rest, you should be asking for more money. Yeah. You are not asking for more money because the money is not there. That is the bottom line. Because one, you have lost access to the international market. So who are you going to get no, the money? No, but, uh, but they say that we haven't lost access to the you market. Do, you it's can't just that go. it's too expensive that, at this point. The point is you can't go. <laughs> In the IMF bailout, this year, the total yeah. amount Ghana can go for, for non-concessional, which is mm -hmm. the normal, is $66 million. That's the only money we can borrow as a country, per the IMF bailout. It is mm -hmm. clearly stated there. Mm -hmm. So you should be looking at concessional loans. Concessional loans, as I said, the countries you want to the loans from mm -hmm. are also battling their own economic crisis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they also don't have money to give you in the uh, concessional loans. So the truth is that if the monies were available, mm -hmm. Oforiata would have asked for more yeah. because a lot of contractors have suspended. A lot of debt is lying to be paid. Yeah. So if really there was money in the kitty, he would have asked for more. He couldn't have asked for more because there, there, there. there's no avenue to get the more but from. I think the man is using it to say that, yeah. you know something, is we are he, making progress, so we don't need the money. No, that that, that's, no, 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 that's not the issue. No, the that's, issue. The, that's not the issue. Yeah, but that's the impression he has The given. issue is that there's no avenue where you can go and get the money. Yeah. So, Based on the economic indicators, you don't have an avenue to get the money. So, the so, only avenue you get money from government is so, loans, grants. Your, uh, resources and taxes. So he was basically yeah. doing PR. So the yeah. bottom line That's is that the bottom line is that if the minister had, if we have more money in the kitty, mm. the minister would have asked for more money. So that all the projects that are have stalled, so yeah. Have stalled yeah. you can pay the contractors yeah. that yeah. they can quickly continue and complete. Yeah. The truth is that the money is not there. Mm. In fact, even though he admits he said there's increase in domestic, in yeah. the overall revenue in yeah. the same budget, yeah. he said there's a shortfall, mm. and because of the shortfall, there has to be. Also, lower spending. Yeah. So it's not that they don't want to spend. I want to go and buy David's dress. Yeah. See, I go to show the yeah. 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 They, they, yeah. they say, they say Charlie, the TB, <laughs> thousand Ghana. Yeah. Me too. I don't know where I go. If you go get thousand Ghana, my last money be five hundred uh, fifty Ghana. Yeah. How am I going? I, I look. Uh, Larry no. Oh, Larry no get money. I go. To, I'm stranded. Even though if I get the what, dress. Why? I, I go where? How do you know I don't no get money? I can't ask you, you say no get. <laughs> I go ask you, you say no get. So, although I wish to wear this nice dress, yeah. I don't have the money to buy it. So, what will I do? I just have to sew the dress crown. I don't think it's necessary. It's yeah. not nice. It is not true. <laughs> so, you see, the truth is that we should face the truth is that with all the development challenges we have, yeah. the, the, the infrastructure gap we have, we should be spending more if the money is yeah, there. Yeah. But the truth is that all the avenues that money is supposed to come from, the tax revenue, there's a shortfall. Mm. So you don't have any money in your national kitty from your tax revenue. Okay. The going to the capital market is not there because you have lost assets. In terms of bilateral uh, non, uh, concessional loans, the countries you are expecting that it should help with concessional loans themselves are battling their own economic crisis. Mm, mm. So they may promise you that we want to support you, but the money will not be forthcoming. Yeah. So all the avenues from where you can make some money, the, the monies are not available. Okay. So if you had gone to Parliament to even go ask for more money, the question is, where is the money going to come from? Yeah. In the past, when you have lost access, you ask for more, then you go to Eurobond and go and collect the money mm. from Eurobond and come and spend. Mm. But right now, you, is that, uh, what, was that is also not there. The smart borrowing. You understand it? So <laughs> we should all understand that uh, it's because smart there is borrowing. no money. There's yeah. no avenue we can get money from yeah. if we wish to. Mm. We will not be able to get it. Okay. So we wish we can have more money. Mm. Yeah. We want OBJB to be completed. We want all the projects that are hanging to be. We want the IPBs to be paid. Obojibis, we want our Obojibis debts Obojibis to be paid. But the, but the point is that mm. the money to pay is right. not there. Okay. So let's let's be clear that it's not that we don't want more money to build the country. Mm. It's because we don't have the money so anywhere. So the man should be blunt and put yeah. it that way. Which, which, which for me, I think, well, again, you know, you know we're talking about that the, the speculation also affects you know, the way things work. No, so maybe, wrong maybe you, you give so. people hope by saying that, you know, we'll figure ah, we it out. We all run it companies, out. true or false. Yeah. And then well, there are times when, Kweku, you have to just be blunt. Brutally honest. So, so you see how the IMF yeah. comes yes. in handy. So yeah. in November, we are doing all this to meet the conditions. In November, they mm. release another 600 million. Mm. So that's 600 million, the few debts and things yeah. we can pay, <laughs> then we spend that and wait for another okay, yes. tranche. We'll, uh -huh. take, we'll take a break.